Hey everybody, good evening and welcome to the show. Uh, we're glad to have you. Welcome to, uh, this is Tuesday, April the 19th. The month is going quickly, but that's okay because guess what? In 12 more we'll have another another April 19th, so that's cool. Uh, so we're, we're glad to have everybody with us tonight and uh, good to have our panel, uh, Dr. Cindy Coates and uh, Apostle Christopher Anderson. We're grateful to uh, all of you uh, who are watching. We welcome you and bless you. Amen. So we are, uh, without uh, going any further in terms of announcements or anything, we're uh, we're starting a new topic tonight, and uh, we're going to be talking uh, just just a question. Okay, what is pride? Because just about everybody really does feel like they have a handle on pride. Not saying that we as a panel have all the answers but simply saying that there are some things that maybe need to be uncovered and discovered. Um, and um, so we just welcome you as we investigate all this. Great to see Apostle Daniel Williams uh, joining us tonight. Uh, Jadora Anderson is joining us from the road uh, behind the wheel. Uh, Dr. Faye is uh, joining us from her office. Uh, Dr. Kay Fairchild. Uh, is joining us, Doctor. Um, uh, doctor. Well, yeah, one day. Uh, uh, our, our student Linda Routley from uh, uh, from Canada is joining us, and so we just welcome all of you. Uh, great crowd. Just before we get started here, so we're going to dig into this this discussion about what is pride. Now, I just want to say this before I get our panel on board. As Doctor Cindy sitting out there by the lake with the campfire, and uh, Apostle Christopher is uh, uh, there on the road traveling, uh, but still able to join us live in person. Uh, when it comes to the word proud, uh, pr and we know proud and pride, two main words in uh, Scripture. Uh, there's many versions and opinions of what the word means. However, the word pride can be defined as one feeling deep pleasure or satisfaction as a result of one's own achievements, qualities, or possessions, or uh, those of some with whom one is closely associated. And I get that. I understand that. Uh, the second is having or showing a high or excessively high opinion of oneself or one's importance. So the word pride can be defined as one, uh, a deep feeling of pleasure or satisfaction derived from one's own achievements, uh, which we just looked at. Uh, there's a little bit different wording here from the qualities or possessions that one uh, that are widely admired. And two, consciousness of one's own dignity. Now here's what James says. Probably James is one of the most famous. Uh, good to see Angie Long, Pastor Angie Long, joining us this evening. Uh, uh, James is probably one of the most famous writers when it comes to pride. We'll be looking at several, but he says in James four verse six. But he gives more grace. Therefore, he says God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Now we need to understand that this are these are the words from James. This is James's perspective in his human experience and his uh, interaction with uh, the eternal Christ. And so I'm not, uh, I'm not denying what he says, but we also know this is an English translation and we want to break this down to some degree because God doesn't resist anybody, but there's an importance to this wording. Now the word proud here is interpreted from the Greek word hooper uh, aphanis. And it means to appear above others. Wow, that's something that really uh, we need to be careful, whatever. And we've been talking about last time the, the fivefold ministry. Uh, as ministers, this is one thing we want to avoid uh, is to feel so proud and so puffed up that we feel like we're above others. Even if you're in a position of authority, that, that technically places you above others. You know what my wife and I did? We, we kind of thought we had developed the concept, even though we saw others use it later on, uh, where we had the, the pyramid that was the pastor on top and the elders next and the, 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 the board and et cetera, et cetera. And then they reversed that and put the pastor on bottom, which was kind of a false humility ploy. But then we came up with the straight line concept. 
that everybody's on the exact same line. Now on that, we do acknowledge that people have different levels of responsibility, some more, some less, and that's okay. There's a lot of people that have a similar responsibility, but we do not want to ever present ourselves to as those who are above others. So let me read this real quick and we'll turn it over to Dr. Cindy. James 4 verse 6 in the Mirror Bible says, His gift of grace is in direct opposition to the vanity of the proud mindset. Proud mindset of self-effort. Proud mindset of self-effort. Whereby people strive to prove themselves as superior to, to others. Gift and reward are opposites. Humility attracts grace. So we, before we get into any other scriptures, Dr. Cindy, I want to turn it over to you. Uh, you've undoubtedly, we've all had, uh, like like uh, the rest of us, had some experience with this and are growing up and maturing. But uh, where are you at now? How are you seeing things when it comes to what we're talking about? Well, I absolutely love this topic. I, I know I say that about every topic, you know. <laughs> I love every topic that we uh, that we share because it's important. This is very, very important, especially for people in ministry. And that seems to be the audience. Mm -hmm. Everyone's an apostle, a doctor, you know, their pastor, their, their teacher. There's a lot of powerful ministry gifts that watch this show or people who feel led um, to grow deeper as though, you know, they had the responsibility to teach this. And that's what's important um, that we, we grow deep and we're hungry, you know, we're hungry to know more because there's plenty of food on this table and I believe it's meat and you better come up in here with a knife and a fork. Okay. Cause we're not, <laughs> nobody's going to be handing out straws. All right. We're not drinking this through a straw tonight. Um, this is for those who are ready to go on to maturity. You know, when you go on to maturity, you have to, you know, chew your meat. You have to, you know, you're getting more of um, stronger food here. And this teaching about humility really should be taught to children at a very young age. Um, but it's sad that so many uh, people uh, grow up in sort of a uh, environment. Maybe it's their home or it could be their community or whatever, where they feel entitled they have this entitlement. They feel like everyone owes them something they never earned. And it's important that, especially in ministry, that we understand things like in Proverbs chapter six, this just jumped out at me a minute ago as you were giving the introduction. I guess the Holy Spirit just said, go and, uh, and just you know read this, which says, um, these six things the Lord hates. Well, that'll get your attention, won't it? Yeah. Six yeah. things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomin abomination to him. The first one is a proud look. A proud look. That comes before a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that derives wicked plans, feet that are swift and running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies and one who sows discord among the brethren. But the proud look was the first thing that was noted because I submit this to you, all the things which precede that come from a pride mindset. It comes from having pride. Pride is so horribly poisonous to the soul. It is so yeah. So bad, so toxic. Nothing can be worse than the kind of pride which elevates our opinions of ourself over the the uh, the mind of God. You know where we say, "Oh, I know the Word says this, but I'm going to go over here and do it this way because I feel." Uh, no, you know we we really do um, have a responsibility as ministers to humble ourselves because by doing that is where you're promoted god exalts the humble he'll promote the humble and there's nothing more beautiful than someone who's meek and teachable 
and humble and gracious to others. I don't care how well educated you are, how much money you have, how, how you know, um, noble your titles are that, you know, that precede your name or go after your name. Like my mother used to say, some people have uh, 360 degrees behind their name. It just makes them a zero. You know, it's like <laughs> one big circle, one big zero. It doesn't matter because if you don't know how to be uh, submitted to God and to humble yourself to God and others, um, it, it, it's, it's, it's just, it's obnoxious. Can I just say that? There, there's, it's just obnoxious. I'm going to be right straightforward here. I don't think we should uh, sip on the straw. Let's go after it with a knife tonight. It's obnoxious. And, and the thing we want to do is to be received. And yes. we're never received when we're cocky and arrogant and feel like we are superior and better than everyone else. Yes. You'll never be received like that. So to be received means to prefer others above you, to lift other people up, to esteem other people, even other people that may trash you that you know about, they, that you know they're talking bad about you behind your back, they have betrayed you, they have hurt you, you still honor and esteem them because it's like pouring uh, coals of fire upon their head. You bless them anyway. Jesus said to bless those who persecute you and come against you. You know, that goes against our natural <laughs> human nature. That's rising up above in that place where we're seated together with Christ, I tell you something, Jesus has loved us and honored us and given us favor. Um, and, and we have not been the most uh, lovely people 24 seven, you know, we've missed it, but guess what happens? Jesus still comes at us and gives us honor and grace. And, 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 and um, he's so gracious to us. You know, and, and to me, whenever I am being honored and I know myself as well as anybody or better, and it is so humbling. It is, it is so humbling to, to get honored and to get, um, you know, things you really didn't work for, you know, and that's why the opposite of the pride that you um, defined was feeling good about yourself and your achievements and all that kind of stuff. And, and I, I get that. And, and there, there should be a certain amount of, um, of uh, I guess, dignity uh, as opposed to pride, because pride has, is such a negative connotation. I, I try not to say I'm proud of people. I know I do it by, by uh, habit because I don't want to be proud of it. I want to be, I like to say, what you have done is very impressive. Sure. Are, are you, your, your achievement is impressive and I'm inspired by your faithfulness. I'm inspired by your work ethic. Be more specific. I'm inspired that you didn't quit and you kept persevering. I'm, I'm inspired because I see God in you. I see you manifesting Christ and that get her done kind of attitude and that going forward, even though you're tired. And I, you see, instead of going, I'm so proud of you, I'd rather like break it down and, and make it more of a um, edification and edify and esteem them by, by uh, being faithful. You know, I think that's something that's apostolic, right? To be, to be, uh, building people up in the body of Christ and, and, and telling them, you know, you're doing a great job. And I, I'm so, I'm so thankful that you're, you're so faithful to God like that, you know, as opposed to, oh, I'm proud of you. That just sounds like something a coach would say to a kid on a baseball field. I'm proud of you, boy. You know, I mean, yeah. whatever, that's not real specific, but I think as ministry leaders, we ought to be able to coach people up better than a than a coach on a baseball field, you know, at the little league Absolutely. team. Absolutely. Amen. And, you know, you know, Dr. Cindy, I, I think that uh, being proud of people uh, without exalting them uh, in a way like we would exalt the, the Lord, you know, to worship them, to idolize them. I think, 
I think is is acceptable. I think when we're we're proud of the achievements people have made, you know, you know what it's like to be a spiritual parent. You know, you've you've taught somebody and you've raised them up, and they now have become the minister. And it's like, man, I'm so proud of them. Well, you know, uh, I, I think that's acceptable. You know, I, I'm I'm current. I want to get uh, Apostle Christopher in here, but I'm I'm currently. Oh, good. There, there's uh, my. My, my brother, my new friend, uh, uh, Jericho Martin, uh, Pastor Jericho Martin from, from uh, uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Praise the Lord, joining us tonight. Okay, so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm finishing my, my course uh, this, this week. I'm, I'm really up against trying to get uh, week five done. But um, in my course about marriage and ministry, I chose to deal with uh, a scripture that I pulled out of one of the previous four lessons about honoring your spouse, honor women honoring a uh, wife honoring the husband and the husband honoring the wife, and why that's important. Uh, because just because the English Bible calls the wife the e the weaker vessel, that's not the way it's translated in the original language at all. Uh, but 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 when it comes to the feminine gender, we need to honor our spouses and likewise honor each other. I wasn't raised so much in that growing up that where there was a uh, uh, marital honor uh, among uh, uh, my parents, and I don't want to say too much here uh, about that, uh, but. Uh, I, I just want to say that honor is so important, and honor to me is not a thing of of pride, but, you know, can I be proud of somebody? I'm so proud of my wife. I mean, you know, if that weaker vessel thing applied to anything other than that moment in the first century, uh, I would have a problem with that because uh, my wife is not a weaker vessel in many ways in many shapes, in many forms. She is strong, and at times, she's the stronger. And so I'm I'm proud uh, of her. But I just want to say that honoring one another, I know Pastor Apostle Christopher, I've got such a habit of calling him a, a pastor, but, uh, but Apostle Christopher, uh, I, I know that he really uh, has a, a, a heart for honoring. And it's okay to honor one another. The scripture says that we should uh, honor one another uh, and and also submit to one another, and I think that's such a beautiful thing in Christendom, in relationships, but especially in marriage. All right, so Apostle Christopher, I want to get you on here because this is such a powerful discussion. Uh, please, I know you're on the road, so bring it on, my brother. Good evening, everyone. So if um, if I go in and out, please beg our pardon. We are traveling west on I-90 from the state of Massachusetts to our home in Indiana. Um, so if it goes in and out, please. We are losing you, my powerful, brother. Powerful discussion. I believe that there to have a proper, do you hear me now? Oh, yeah, you're back. All right. Um, it's, 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 I think it's a healthy place of honor when you can have a, a healthy regard um, for someone's achievement, someone's achievement in the Lord. Um, I think there's a proper place for that. As long as it's not inordinate, inordinate where you esteem um, them or esteem you know, their actions in an uh, unhealthy manner, as long as it's healthy. Um, but I love, I love the example that you shared I love the example that you shared about everyone being on the same plane. I'll never forget where, um, where Dr. Bill, you quoted once about how you only can have intimacy among equals. Uh, yes. Oh, you know, and, 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 even, and even I heard another minister say years ago that there's no, there's no such thing uh, um, as uh, true fellowship unless you're seen as equals. And so um, I think that pride begins, pride begins, but I, 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 let me digress. I, I, I'll say healthy humility begins with agreeing with whom Father says you are. And healthy humility begins with agreeing with whom the Father has identified himself as. And yes. Um, any, anytime, anything that would be pride 
will begin with disagreeing with those two, those two images. Um, if the father says that, since the father says that we are one with him, then humility would agree with that and operate as such. Pride, on the other hand, will, will receive, read, or even be instructed in the kingdom from, from the reality that the Father says we have. Pride will try to operate opposite of that. Um, and so, so pride for me, uh, pride for me, in my experience, has always been a posture in my in the heart of an image of independence from who and how Father says we are. You know, uh, and, and and one thing about it is, I, I, pride has a frequency. You can you just like humility has a frequency to it. You can sense it. You can feel it. You know it when you, you know it when you're around it. I I love humility. I love when people have humility because you can't fake it. <laughs> it's either authentic or it's not. You know, um, you, you can't you can't deny it. Uh, it when when someone has authentic humility, it bears witness with with the oneness on the inside of you. Um, I want to say that about uh, Dr. K. Fairchild. What is, one of the things that I'm always alarmed about is when people have, uh, I, I read a quote to, uh, the other day where someone said, someone said, spiritual evidence is proof that you're teaching a revelation, but not walking in it. And oftentimes people will have revelation knowledge and have a spiritual arrogance with it. When actually a, a living from encounter with God will produce empathy, it will produce humility. It will produce um, the very opposite of pride and arrogance. Yes. And so, and that's why I mentioned Kate Fairchild, because with the depth of understanding and revelation that um, that, she, that the Lord has revealed to her and that, she, that he has given to her, it has been my experience with her that um, it's an authentic humility there. And... Um, and that was so refreshing to deal with. It's so refreshing to deal with. And so to, to, to deal, to have people um, who have a kingdom posture like that with so much insight. Um, one, of, one of the things that I've seen in the kingdom in, in, my, in, in my neck of the woods is that people will have revelation knowledge. And then, then the focus goes from building people to building their brand. <laughs> and and it's just it's just really honorable when people have a live when you live from true encounter and not seeking encounter with with with, with, with God or Father. Uh, when you live from encounter and not striving for an encounter, um, I believe true humility is the byproduct of that. And so pride pride starts with I believe a uh, disagreement with who the father has identified you as uh, the inheritance he's identified you as having and uh, uh, an identity that he says you, you already you already are. So yeah. it starts with yeah. it, it starts with disagreeing with whom he said you are and disagreeing with who he said he is. Um, and when you live from that place, you you I think pride is a natural byproduct. Uh, Dr. Bill. Yes, thank you so much. That is so good. Um, yes. Uh, and and I, I just know that, uh, that you know, that phrase uh, really took me uh, to a whole new level of understanding uh, that true intimacy, um, uh, uh, um, e equality. Uh, I even forget how I've said that. I've taught that so many times and I just, I can't remember at the moment, but, but uh, intimacy, I got it. Intimacy requires equality. And see, that's the thing we've done with Father God is I understand that I am the created of the creator. I get that. But my father never looks at me as a lesser. 
He always looks at me as his equal, and here's why. It's because he wants the maximum of, uh, yield of, of intimacy in relationship. And so it's important that we understand that we have a divine creator, but at the same time, we can step on up to uh, an equality that yields the greatest amount of intimacy that we can obtain from the relationship. And that's what happens in marriages. And I know we're not necessarily talking about marriages tonight, but uh, but that's what happens in marriages so much. We see the uh, the, the dominant and and the the, the lesser, uh, the the subordinate, and that's that's not. Uh, of, that never builds for a good relationship. It really causes some emotions not to work right in the other person. Now, uh, enough about that. Let me go on to James 4, verse 6 in the Passion Translation. He says, but he continues to pour out more and more grace, or this could be translated, he gives us a greater gift upon us. For it says, God resists you when you are proud, but continually pours out grace when you are humble. So I, I think that in all of us, there has to be a balance. Can I be proud uh, of achievements? Yes, uh, but also remain humble. There must be a balance in all things. And so as the word uh, here says, he continues to pour out more uh, and more grace. Uh, it, it's interpreted as he gives us greater grace or a greater gift of grace. This can also be rendered as the grace favor he gives us is stronger in us. And I think there's, there's just literally no replacement for walking in humility as a humble person. Um, so uh, let me bring Dr. Cindy back on before because I, I, I could easily get carried away tonight. Uh, but th this is a great subject. Dr. Cindy, take us further if you would. Wow. Yes, I love it. There's so much to say on this. So, so much. And um, some things that are coming to me as um, Apostle Chris was speaking and you as well um, is the fact that knowledge puffs up you know, as far as having revelation knowledge, revelatory teaching, um, hearing from God, having prophetic insight into things in the word. Um, the knowledge, knowledge puffs up, it can puff up, but love edifies. And so we always want to make sure that we're building other people up. It's all about an, an impartation of other people. It's an outward expression of an inward work. It's an outward um flow you're out of the uh you know out of your belly flows rivers of living yes. water you should be one that's always in a supply mode that you are supplying if you're always supplying you're always giving forth you're always you know it, it's uh an extension it's a ministry um and you know i guess i can say this because my husband and i Speaking of a married couple in ministry, we, um, like you guys, that like you and, and Dr. Fay, when we got married, we knew that our uh, marriage was a ministry marriage. We, it was both. It was a ministry and a marriage. We knew that our marriage was a ministry marriage. We knew that, that we were coming together by a design of God uh, for the kingdom of God because of our gifts and talents and and the things that God has shown us to, in our heart to do, um, we co-labor and have been doing so for 38 years. Um, and, and so we've planted seven churches and we've, um, you know, written so many Bible courses and articles, we've lost count and done conferences and all this. But the thing is, is that Every time, and I just want to say this, every single time um, I ever go to anybody's meeting or my husband goes to anybody's meeting, we always sit in the back. We always sit in the back. Jesus said to go sit in the back. And then, we, then you are invited to come to the front. But don't ever go up in a meeting and expect some usher to put you on the front row or put you in some kind of section where all the people are important or anything like that because that kind of an entitlement um 
you know, we're seasoned ministers, we're senior ministers and whatever. It doesn't matter. None of that matters because in someone else's meeting and someone else's house and someone else's dynamic, you might just be sitting on the back row observing. Okay. And, and you better be okay with that. Cause if you're not, don't even show up. Don't even show up at someone else's meeting if you're not willing to get back on the back row and stay there the whole time because it might not be about you. And I know that there's some people in ministry that might be watching this later and go, ouch, you know, because they do that. They walk in, they call ahead of time. I'll be coming in with my entourage and I would like you to know to uh, acknowledge me from the platform and, and, and this is my resume and whatever. And when people do that kind of thing, and expect a lot of recognition. To me, I feel sorry for them because it's like, really? Do you really need that? <laughs> Do you need that kind of attention? <laughs> because it's kind of embarrassing. And I always have loved uh, being able to sit in the back of a, of, a, of a meeting. It's just wonderful because to me, it's refreshing. I, there's nothing expected out of me to do. Um, but there have been many occasions where we've been noticed and brought to the front for whatever reason, who knows, different things over the years. But, you know, it's such a blessing to, to do things the way Jesus said to do them. You know, I have seen people strut into a meeting and go up to the front and, and they were asked to go back and sit in the back someplace. And, and I've seen them get embarrassed, like, what, wait, uh, do you know who I am? That kind of stuff. Yeah. That's ridiculous. You know, I think we're way past that. We really should be. That is so 1980s. I'm sorry. That is just not even in the Y2K. I mean, that's not even in the 2000s. It's like, that is so far back. Nobody should be doing that anymore. I mean, uh, you know, just knowing that you are in the kingdom whoever someone thinks you are or however you're ex you're received you know there's sometimes i'll go someplace a minute and, and i'll just i guess i'm going to minister i'm just going and i might be uh seen as just the mother of tyler coates yeah i'm tyler's mom because I'm telling you, when he's up there leading worship, that's it. I'm Tyler's mom. That's it. I am Tyler's mom. That is all I am, you know? And so people come up to me, oh, are you Tyler's mom? And I go, yeah. And like, oh, we love him. <laughs> it's all about Tyler, you know? Or I'll go and my husband will be leading worship and whatever. And they'll come up to me. Oh, are you Dr. Stan's wife? You know? Yeah, I'm Dr. Stan's wife. Oh, we just love him. And that's all I am. That is all I am at that moment to those people. That is it. I'm not about to go, oh, no, excuse me, and tell them my, they don't care. Because the thing is, is that we have to realize wherever we are, we're received in that capacity, you know, and, and that's it. And, and um, when you're, when you're, when you're okay with that, it's important. Now, I want to tell you this real quick, and then I, I want to let Dr. Uh, uh, Apostle Chris have this, but um, something else I wrote down, guys, and um, I mentioned him before. His name is Arthur Burt, B-U-R-T. Arthur Burt was uh, my husband's uncle. Um, in fact, great uncle, because Marge Coates, he was married to Marge Coates, um, who was a relative of my husband's family. And they were from England. Now, uh, Arthur Burt ministered with Smith Wigglesworth. A lot of people know Smith Wigglesworth and, they, and they're they familiar with the miracles and the healings and that ministry. But Uncle Arthur used to come and stay at our house right here, the house that I am in right now. Uncle Arthur used to come and sleep on our sleeper sofa you know, many times, too many times than I know to count. I mean, I don't know how many times he would fly over the Atlantic ocean in his nineties. Oftentimes, as he would say, I flew over the pond with a diaper and a stick because he had to have a little cane and he had to have a diaper, but he flew 
to Atlanta from Manchester, England, and he would fly here and he would stay in my house and he would preach and he would preach like somebody that was like in their 40s, 30s or 40s. And the thing he would preach about was humility. Mm -hmm. He taught more about humility and that being the power of ministry. There's nothing more powerful in ministry than humility. Look what Jesus did when he, when he uh, rode on the donkey that actually it was the, it was the, uh, the foal of a, of a donkey. It was the lowest you could go. He, uh, he into uh, Jerusalem, you know, at the triumphal entry on Palm Sunday, he didn't come riding in there on a high horse, a big white horse, you know, like some general of an army. And he came in there in the most lowly of states. He came in, you know, the last thing he did to his followers was wash their feet. You know, I mean, he served. The greatest in the kingdom is the servant of all. And and unless yes. anyone knows how to serve and 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 encourage and edify other people and not ever uh, assume that they're important, you know, being important is overrated. But one thing, Doctor, I mean, um, Uncle Arthur used to always say was this: pride is so dangerous. He used to explain it like sin, doubt, and unbelief are never the root to problems in our lives. They're never the root. He said, it's like, he said, um, pri uh, uh, arrogant, I mean, I'm sorry. He'd say doubt and unbelief and sin, they're like a spider web. They're like a spider web. And every morning you get up and you take your broom and you start trying to knock down that spider web out of the top of the ceiling up there. You just knock it down every morning. You get up the next morning and you take your broom out and you start knocking that spider web again. Every day you start going after the sin or going after the doubt and unbelief or going after that every morning to take out that, that broom and over again. But Uncle Arthur used to say, but until you kill the spider, you will not get rid of the spider webs. And he says, the spider is pride. Mm -hmm. It's pride that is the spider that spins the webs of sin and doubt and unbelief because it's always thinking, we know better than God. We know better than God. God, I know what you said, but I'm going over here and doing it my way. That's pride. And not submitting when God says, I know you, the doctor says you're sick, but I say you're well. I say you're healed. Yes, sir. I'm not doubting that anymore. Yes, sir. I submit. I humble myself to that truth, Lord Jesus. And that's what you do. You submit and humble yourself. You might be broke as a joke. You might have lost all your money and your negative balance or whatever. God says you're rich. God says, I have given you the power to create wealth, to establish my covenant in the earth. Yes, sir. I submit to that, Lord. I'm not going to let my pride think I know more than you. You said that you have blessed me with all spiritual gifts that, that all things are, which pertain to life and godliness have been bestowed upon me. Therefore, I submit to that truth, Lord. And so there's humility in that. And so I love that example that, that Uncle Arthur used to give. I wish I could take credit for it, but he I, I always want to give him credit because it's so, so good that we have to kill the spider and the spider is pride. Yeah. Yeah. Great, uh, great story. Great uh, Uncle Arthur. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to have people in our families and, and in our lives that uh, have some uh, some practical wisdom uh, about them uh, when it comes to just basic things in life. Uh, Apostle Christopher, um, uh, I, I'm going to turn it over to you uh, uh, probably to wrap this up. We're at a quarter till right now, but uh, whatever's on your heart, please go ahead. Well, I love that example um, 
let me know let me know if i go in and out because like i said we're still traveling on 90 west but uh, i love that example about the spider and the spider web um uh, think about humility uh, that i love the most is that humility is a conscious decision it is a it is a it is a lifestyle of choice uh it, it, that 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 really comes from a, a heart posture but you god does not humble the person you humble the scripture says humble yourself that's um, right it's sort of so it's a decision it's a conscious decision to 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 take the lower place to to, to sit in the back if you will um to to take on the towel of a servant I've, I've i've been in services where i was the keynote speaker and, um, and then afterwards, I will put on an apron and um, and serve God's people. <laughs> you know, now I was and, and now serving serving from the pulpit or te- uh, preaching from the pulpit is just serving. Uh, it's just serving, also. You know what I mean? And then, um, so whether I'm serving from behind the pulpit or serving plates, uh, it's just an honor to esteem God's people. Um, and, um, as high as he does, and so and when I say that, I'm not just talking about Christians. <laughs> I'm talking about all of mankind. For God so loved the world, not so God, not for God so loved the Christian, or not you know, for God so loved the world, and and I and, I, and so it is to esteem others um, from a place. It's just simply agreeing with God. And um, it's simply agreeing with humility is simply agreeing with God and in agreeing with God that is esteeming what he esteemed. I, I, I read a book many years ago and it was talking about the fear of the Lord and the simple definition, if you will, of the fear of the Lord that this author gave is to hate what God hates and to love what God loves. And, um, and, and, and I like what Dr. Cindy read initially talking about uh the the, the the things that the lord hates if you will one of them is a proud look and so uh since god esteems people and god loves people and god has value on people all of mankind and so that that means so do i and so how do i know one of the indicators um that someone is in pride is when they devalue other people or 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 causes some sort of separation um if it's really godly and i know i know the scriptures you know i know people often ask but what jesus said i didn't come to bring peace but a sword yeah yeah Yeah. but um you know and i I understand the context of of what he's when he said that in whom he was talking to um and he was dealing with religion at the time but when we're talking about um um, loving on mankind. If, uh, if 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 your revelation or if your religious stance um, belittles or devalues someone else, it is obvious that it that is not God. It's ego, egotistical, because ego um, esteems one and belittles another. Um, and then another thing that uh, this pride will always esteem uh, preference above. Uh, people, and so as if God, as if God caters to just your preference, and that can be in, in, in a lot of different ways. And so, um, I always watch. One of the ways I like what Dr. Cindy just, what Dr. Cindy said. One of the ways that I can tell how a min, how much pride a minister is walking in, um, is when, is how they steward the revelation knowledge that god has given somebody else that's good uh because because if i if dr bill i always you know i've shared that revelation about intimacy intimacy requires equality i've shared that with several people and i always say you know that dr dr bill henshu is the one that i heard say that i'm very particular about uh stewarding the revelation knowledge that god gives to others because if I if I give a revelation, if I state a revelation, and I don't share the source of it, or you know, the ultimate source, yes, is, is our Father, but um, but but if I give a revelation and I act like it's mine, what I'm trying to do is project an image to you about me, 
that's not authentic. My authentic image comes from who God says I am. And that's the basis and the yes. source of everything that I do. Yes. Yes. And so I can't, I'm not going to project myself to be something that I'm not. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to value, you know, whom God said that I am. And so uh, pride um, is always living from an image that is contrary to how God says you are. And that can come in a plethora of different ways. And so um, from, from projecting the image to other people to um, disagreeing and not yielding and, and, you know, to whom God says I am, how God says I am, the truth. People, people can say, um, uh, people can say, you know, it's hard to walk in love, and and it, it and it is hard when you have not when you have not practiced it. Everything is difficult when in the beginning to practice. You know what I mean? And so, uh, I, but I believe that love is at the core of my being. That I'm created in His image and in His likeness, and 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 so walking in love is uh, is my natural state. I just hadn't practiced it. Um, it's just a simple. It's just a matter of agreeing with how God says we are. And so um, um, it's, it's impossible for a person to um, disagree with God in any way and, and, not, and, not, and, then, and not go about devaluing other people. Um, pride is an ugly, 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 ugly thing. And, um, and, and I believe that it's one of the things that God hates because when you walk in pride, you posture yourself not to be able to receive the best that I believe that life um, has to offer. Um, it's, it's an offense to him because it, I, as you move yourself, you don't put yourself in a position where you can receive the best that life has to offer. And I love what Dr. Bill said um, at the beginning. It's not that God resists the proud. It's just that um, um, when I, I believe, and I heard Brian Christian say it, Brian Christian say it, that when you, um, when you are not walking in your identity, the earth realm is created where um, it, will it, it will resist you. Um, the goodness of God follows us. But when you are in pride, you're rejecting, actually, you're actually rejecting the goodness of God. That's my, right. that's what I, that's what I believe. When you're walking in, when you're, when you're walking in pride, um, you are actually rejecting the goodness the goodness of God, not only in you, but that 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 but that's on you, and that's yours to come, Doctor Bill. Yes, yes, that's yes. Good. Amen. Amen. Uh, never, never, and in, in in any way, let me admonish everybody: never allow pride to rule you uh, in any way. Now, it isn't that we all uh, that we may not get out of line at times with our our love walk or with pride or or could have been uh, acted more in humility and didn't. It's not that we don't all deal with that. It's just that when you're mature enough to see that and correct that in yourself, uh, listen, don't go around correcting that in everybody else, okay? Uh, correct that in yourself. Set the example. And I think that's one of the things we established in the past three sessions about the fivefold ministry is the things that need to be corrected, uh, like Pastor uh, Apostle Christopher said, you know, God's not going to, forcibly humble you uh and i know it can feel that way sometimes and, and in the way, old way of thinking the old school uh philosophies yeah we thought that but really you are told to humble yourself humble yeah. yourselves under the mighty hand of god yes. um you know when when james says this um uh he he actually um the, the latter part of the verse is a reference to proverbs 3 34, uh, which in the Passion Translation says, if you walk with the mockers, you will learn to mock. But God's grace and favor flow to the meek, or literally to the humble. And so, you know, I, I, the thing I love about Jesus, in the example we have of Jesus in the first century, is Jesus didn't avoid people. Okay, he was accused of being a, a, a wino, 
because uh, he hung out with those. He was accused of, of hanging out with prostitutes, and he did. He was accused of hanging out with all kinds of people because, hey, he did. But he didn't do what they did. Just because you hang out with people doesn't mean you have to participate in the things they do. And I'm saying that tonight to say that if you're going to impact the world around you, you're going to have to rub shoulders with people that may not be those who are uh, first in line to enter your church door. Um, <laughs> on, I mean, that just might not be them. But you can go out in the community, uh, you can have them uh, sit on, on the patio and have a cup of coffee or something. You can interact with them and show them that, look, I'm not of the world, but I am in the world. And so here I am. I want to interact with you. And I'm humble enough to do that. And I'm proud of the opportunity that we can share together. And so... Uh, I think this is so important. Uh, Dr. Cindy, I'm going to give you uh, uh, two two minutes for a closing. I just want to say I love what uh, Apostle Chris said about, um, and I wrote it down. I want to make sure that I'm a steward of what he says, because uh, I think it's powerful. When yeah. he said, um, pride is living in contrary to whom God says I am. That's important. And then when he said, um, uh, pride is rejecting the goodness of God in you. That's so powerful. That ought to be very um, uh, encouraging to know that, you know, by walking in pride, then we're denying the goodness of God from coming out, which is humility. It's so Humility is such a beautiful thing. It's so, so beautiful. And I just enjoy uh, this so much. I appreciate the things that Dr. Bill has said tonight. And I think it's been a very rich show. I really do. And I'm very honored to be here. Yeah. Amen. I, I, I appreciate all of you as well. And, and our viewers, we have some awesome viewers out there. Yeah. Uh, Apostle Christopher, uh, two minutes for closing uh, before we end tonight. Yeah. I, I, listen, I honor, I honor the history, the history that Dr. Bill that Dr. Bill um, has, has had with God and Dr. Cindy has had with God and our listeners and our viewers. Thank you all so much for bringing all that to the stage when, when we're here. I'm reminded of the um, author, Christian author. I um, can't remember what nationality he is, but uh, Andrew, Andrew Murray. Andrew Murray wrote a book many, many years ago that I, I mean, feasted on for years um, about, and the, the book was titled Humility. The book was titled Humility, and I remember a, 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 a quote that he said in that book. Uh, he said, um, always be like water. Always be like water, because water always rushes to the lowest place. Water always rushes to the lowest place. And um, though, I, um, though I am, I, I walk very um, honorably as in, the, in, the, in the place of a son, I'll always posture my heart as the, as the, with the towel of the servant. Um, and it's not a false humility because that false humility always want to be seen, not wanting to be seen, quote unquote, right? We've seen that before. But, um, but, but, but it's always taking up the towel of the servant. And I, and I commit myself, I've committed myself um, and I want to admonish those watching to always be like water. You can go into a church and you can see a, 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 a you can see a place that needs to be served. Um, and, and like Dr. Cindy said and Dr. Bill said before, look, we 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 we've been behind pulpits, but I'm but I'll never let the microphone be bigger than a toilet brush. <laughs> um, best best way to be. And when the microphone is more important than the toilet brush. Something has gotten something has gotten off. Always be like water. Always be like water and rush to the lowest place. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. Wow. So so much uh Dr. Bill. So much good stuff. So much good stuff. So much I good just stuff. saw where Andrew Murray uh is from South Africa. Okay. Okay. Well that uh, that takes care of that mystery. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, I just appreciate all of you uh, so much. I appreciate everybody watching. 
uh, we have been pushing it long and hard in the school. Uh, I'm going to end tonight's show, and usually uh, the panel and I have some discussions, but uh, I'm going to end tonight's show and go get this posted real quick on Facebook and uh, just some crash time. Uh, but we are currently, current student body, if I'm reading everything right, is 444 students. Now, keep in mind, we are also now enrolling for over the summer break when we begin back up in August 1st. Um, in May, we'll be graduating roughly 210 of our students to the next degree level, associate, bachelor, and master students. And I'm so proud of these students uh, because the things we're talking about here are things that I talk about in my classes. Now, I don't take my lessons and bring them to the show, but the concepts are the same. You know, like I'm talking about marriage and ministry. There are so many ministers around the world that see their spouse as the subordinate, as the lesser, the stay at home, take care of the children, clean the house. And I, I know that there are times that a, a woman will choose that role, but I also know there are times where I've seen husbands choose that role and the wife go out and be the pastor of a, a church or the CEO of a corporation. Uh, Dr. Fay just posted a note, 59 associates, 162 bachelors, 178 masters, and 45 doctorates. Wow. I mean, and, and you know, to think about how we started with four students, not really knowing what God was, uh, I mean, just doing our best just to try to determine what Father was up to, and uh, here we are. So, uh, humility. I want to tell you, honor one another. Be humble. Um, you know, my wife and I are the kind of people that if, if she's going to the kitchen, she will ask me, is there something you want in here? And she'll bring it. And I, I do the same thing. Now, uh, I've not lately been getting around as well, but but when but when I go get water, I ask her if she wants water. I mean, we we try our best to take care of each other and to honor each other, and I I just think that's so important. You know, Dr. Cindy, I've watched her ministry online. I've watched her uh, with uh, their their church, the porch there in their home and her husband and her son that leads worship and this ministry team that flows together that honors one another, the gifts in one another. I just had a meeting with pa Apostle Christopher and his wife, uh, Sister Jadora, and uh, and they just honor each other and, and just, you know, there's no restriction to speak, just share your heart type thing. And she is a prophetess of the Lord, and I'll be having her on a show uh, as soon as I possibly can. But it's so important that we do this. You know, when it comes to our corporation, uh, you know, I, I am the president, but basically because I generally set up all of this stuff and do all the paperwork for the corporation, but she's the managing director. Let me tell you something. Of our school, she is the boss, okay? She's the boss. And when she says something, I just say, you know what? I know you're going to say I always say this, but you're the boss. You're the one with the smarts when it comes to running this school. And I submit everything that I am to her. And, of course, there are times where I have to chime in and help make decisions. But I'm just very grateful that we're not a, and I'm just going to say this. I don't want to be offensive to anybody. If you're watching from wherever you're watching in the world, I don't want us to be male chauvinist. Uh, individuals and dominate our spouses. Once again, my father, God, does not dominate me. He tries to bring me, uh, no matter what I'm thinking at the moment, he tries to bring me right to his level, face to face, because you have to understand how I was created. It wasn't just face to face, as in I'm out here and he's out here. It was face into face. So I can see through his eyes and think through his mind and speak through his mouth. Face into face is what the Hebrew and the Greek says. So, and did you know that um, to, to, to uh, well, let, let's save that for another time. I'm, I'm, I'm fired up, obviously. I love you all. Thank you, panel. Uh, thank you, those that are watching. Uh, please, uh, <laughs> uh, please cl click, uh, click uh, like and click share, everybody. Uh, I'll post some links and stuff in here uh, before we're done. But, I just love you all. Thank you so much for being on. Great show tonight. Great Amen. Show. Amen.
Wow. This is one of those you hate to end. But we'll be back next week. Uh, join me tomorrow night. Ap Apostle John Barrett uh, will be with me. We're going to be talking about the river that flows from God. And that river is the river that's in you. And we're talking about what that is. And uh, he also is uh, one of our ministers ordained with our ministry. Uh, Friday, uh, Apostle Daniel Williams will be with me uh, as we're going to be sharing. We had a wonderful session last week. And we're going to be sharing again this Friday. And he, he is also an apostle uh, consecrated with our ministry as Apostle Christopher Anderson is. So we just appreciate and love all of you. Uh, not tomorrow night. You're right, Dr. Fay. Tomorrow's Wednesday. Join me in the morning, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, for uh, the book of Joshua, Type and Shadow. Thursday, uh, Kingdom Dynamics with Apostle John Barrett. Friday, um, uh, Friday morning conversations with Apostle um, um, Daniel Williams. And so, love you all. Panel, I'm sorry for getting overboard and just kind of just kind of took over. I didn't mean to, but. Um, no, 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 no. There's no, a lot no. of fire in this in this thing. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. There, there's fire in this. Yeah. Well, let, we love you all. Uh, we'll see you soon. Have a great rest of your evening. We love you, everybody. Good night. Bye.